Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today I'm going to make the review of this pen. And this pen is a Parker 180 steel with chrome trim. And let's see the review. First, I like this kind of pens. I always did like the Parker metal pens from the 60s, 70s, 80s. But this is a little bit too slim, even for me. I would not say even for me because I like fat pens. This is very slim, but it is interesting. So, this is the 180, and it was a pen that was released in 1977, and it was discontinued in 1985. And this pen, first let's look at the outside, and then I will talk a little bit more about its history. So, we have on the outside a uh, top of the cap that is like the shape of a plate, also the same thing on the bottom of the, of the barrel, and then you have a very slim pen that tapers slightly on both hands. In the top cap it has some kind of rings engraved. It has the Parker arrow clip with those feathers there. I find Parker clips very nice, but if you have a closed fabric, for example for a pocket, if you have a, a fabric that has bigger holes uh, between the fibers, this sometimes catches in them and then you take it off, it pulls the, the strings out, it's very bad. Then here you have the Parker no model name, and then made in USA and date code. I guess you couldn't see that. And that's it. Very simple steel uh, barrel. Very similar to other pens of the same age. But when you uncap the pen, you'll see a totally different thing. Is You have a very long section with these little squares for better gripping. Then you have these flaring out little ring like the end of the section to hold the cap in place. That's where the cap clicks. And then you have a very strange nib. This is the top part with a metal piece there and the down part, the under, underside of it with the feed, the black feed. And this is the pen. Then you can unscrew this and you have access to the Internet to the international, not international, sorry, for to the Parker proprietary cartridge, or you can put a Parker uh, converter. By that time, there were f some fat Parker converters that wouldn't fit. They all the all Parker's converters fit in every pen in terms of the mouth of the feed, but some of those, the fatter ones, would not fit this pen because of the width of the, the, the converter. So this is the pen from the outside. Now let me talk, go back and talk a little bit more about the history. The information that I'm talking to you, that I'm, to, uh, that I'm telling you, is taken from the, the very famous website, the parkerpens.net, and they tell us that this pen came as an alternative to the Parker 75. The Parker 75 was a higher range pen, this one, that it was made of sterling silver, gold, gold plated, any many variations still like this. And it has this section. This I'll talk about this someday later because I never reviewed the Parker 75 yet. And the weird question about this pen is that it has a gold nib. Okay? What's wrong about that? Nothing wrong. But we have to think where we were on that time. That time we were in 1977. Fountain pen use was going down. People were not using fountain pens anymore. And they were using mostly ballpoint pens. And ballpoint pens had that characteristic that they still have. You just click them, they are ready to use, and you, if they don't write well, or even if they do, you can use a lot of force to write with them. 
result people were used to this one or some kind of a ballpoint and starting doing this because the gold nib is much softer they got back many pens many Parker 75 bent or within the times very apart nibs were ruined so they thought why don't we make a pen that is made to resemble uh, a ballpoint and you can see this is much more similar and there was the matching ballpoint for that one it was even slimmer than that one and the same kind of design and by doing so they thought about putting a very hard nib that would be able to stand the pressure that that one couldn't so what they did they made like these uh, arrowhead shaped nib it's very strange this kind of nib with a feed that goes all the way up until the, the tip of the of the, the nib and on the other side they have a metal thing that may, that puts the, the nib in place so you can press it harder and it will not deform the nib okay if you want to try you will be able to deform the nib but it was made with that in the objective but why is this called the Parker 180. It was called 180 because this pen could be used to write both ways in regular side and reverse side. Okay, this is, was just something for marketing. Yes, it was true, but in fact, I think since the Parker, I would not say Parker do full, but I'm not completely sure of that, but at least since Parker Vacuumatic in the 1930s, so I guess maybe even earlier in the Parker Dufold, Parker pens were known for being well-tuned in both sides of the nib. So you could write with the right side and with the reverse side, and it would be uh, the same kind of writing experience, except that when you wrote in reverse, the line would be much thinner. That was something that Parker did for many years and now they did the same thing, but they advertised it. I have here one that is more interesting than that. And this is another Parker 180. This was one I had before. Unfortunately, this has some problem with the feed. I think it's clogged with some kind of strange stuff. I cannot have this pen writing. It doesn't write. I, it was on the ultrasonic cleaner. I did everything to it. I cannot take the feed apart and I cannot make it write. So, but I'm not that worried. I have that one and someday I will come back to that. But I just want to show it. First, this pen came with gold nib. That's kind of this one. And then they replaced the gold nib with a steel nib. That's the case of this one that I showed you first. So, this one is out of alignment, that metal piece, but on the feed, and let's see if you can see it. Let me put extra light here. Maybe it will be easier. Okay, I think you can see. You have X and M, which means that on the right side the pen would write like an M, and on the reverse side it would write like an extra fine. But it is something that everybody know. They would do it. They had two variations. They had the extra fine medium and the fine broad. So they have you got to writing with with the same pen. This one curiously only has one of the markings the M there I think you can see it something that also happened in these pens is like is this sometimes there is some oxidation or corrosion on metal rings that is a problem that is quite uh, common with these Parker pens so I have explained you I think almost everything about this pen. Let me just show you some evolutions. I have here two variations, gold, uh, chrome trim and gold trim, one gold nib and a steel nib. 
And then they made another pen that was this. The same kind of pen that is the Parker Classic. However, this one doesn't have the metal thingy on top, just the feet. And this is much more of a regular pen, but equally slim. Now, for the size comparison, I want to show it next to the Lamy Safari and next to a Parker Centennial Lufold. You see, this is a very, very, very slim pen. When you uncap the... it's not a short pen, but it is very slim. When you uncap the three pens, the 180 is a little bit smaller, a bit shorter, but it is... Uh, it's not that short, but it is very slimmer. Something interesting is that you can post the pen. Some of these metal Parker pens from this age had the problem of the cap uh, scratching the, the barrel, and they did something interesting in this pen, is this. The cap stays in place by clicking there has the, the, same the same kind of thing it does when it clicks there. So it clicks on place and there is just... I will not be able to show you that because the camera will not focus, but you see there is a very, very, very small gap all around and the pen, the barrel doesn't touch the cap or the cap doesn't touch the barrel. So it is good because it will not scratch the finish. It's very well done. Another interesting thing is when you post the pen it posts so deeply that it was shorter a little bit than the Parker Dufault and this way it is just a little bit longer. Oh, sorry, I'm doing this all out of the framing. So it, it is much, much... Uh, it doesn't get much longer, but it has an awesome balance to write with. I find this pen to be too thin for what I like to use. So this is, I, I bought this pen because I wanted to show it here on the channel and because it was inexpensive and I like these kind of Parker pens and I admire the Parker history so I, need to, I needed to have the pen but I will not write with that a lot. I've been having this pen around for a long time and I'm not write, and I didn't write with that very much. But it is so comfortable to use Post-it because the cap goes very, very, very deeply. If you want to see, this is how it is unkept and posted, sorry. And let's see how deep it goes, kept like that. So, very well made in that particular uh, point. This is so slim because they wanted to emulate the same kind of writing feeling that you had on the ballpoint. So, that's what you get. Now, let's see how the pen performs on paper. And here we have our pen and paper, and let's start. So, this is the Parker, let me rotate the cap, a little bit of OCD. Parker 180, steel version, uh, with a medium nib. And it skipped there, but I guess it was my fault. This is the Rhodia, or Rhodia dot pad and the ink inside is the Monte Grappa turquoise. First thing, first thing, I find that Monte Grappa turquoise is kind of a, a dry ink. It's not dry, but it's not very lubricated, so when you write with it, it, it seems to, to drag a little on the paper. But this nib really performs well. And let me show you what I mean. You have a nice wet line, a medium line, that is not so narrow. And about the line variation that you can have is, it writes like this, the medium, and it is a real medium. Oops, I got it out of. Okay, this pen is 180 because you can 
rotate it 180, but it doesn't write in between angles, so if you rotate it a little bit, it skips. That's a problem with these kind of Parker pens. Sometimes their sweet spot on paper is very, very narrow. But let's come back. This is the line that you can get out of this pen, and if you do it, it is quite wet for a medium nib, I would say. So, this is the regular line. If you press it a little, you'll have some more ink, but not exactly a wider uh, line. And you can also write upside down, or on the reverse side, and you'll have a slightly thinner line. But I don't find this one to have that real particularity of having a very different writing experience in one side or the other side of, of the nib. But what you can surely have is the same kind of smoothness and writing experience. This is quite smooth. I like this nib. No line variation, but it writes really well. The only annoying thing, if you are not very careful in writing with it, is that the angle variation. If you rotate just a little, it has no tolerance with that and it will skip. But if you keep the pen in the right position, that's good to go. In that sense, it reminds me a little bit the Parker 45 and the Parker 51 that needed to have perfectly aligned with the paper. Otherwise, just a small rotation, it doesn't write anymore. But if you do it the right way, it writes wonderfully. It is a very good pen. And if you like a slim pen, this is this may be the pen for you. I would say this is the pen that is really good for uh, some... If Imagine that you like to go around with a pen. Imagine that you like small pens or slimmer pens to put inside a notebook that you use when you travel, when you try to write your thoughts or anything like that, this is a good pen for it. There are several options for smaller pens, like the, the Caveco Sport, which is really uh, shorter but thicker. And if you want... Uh, so it's not that good. But if you want to have a slim pen to fit into a book or a journal. But maybe you have the Caveco Lilliput or the Traveler's Notebook, um, the Traveler's Pen for the Traveler's Notebook or maybe some Vingsung 60. They are small pens. But what you have to... But, but they are slim, but they are small. Maybe you want to have a slim pen to fit in the book, but in a longer size because you like to write with a longer pen. I would say this is one of the nicest pens to do that because it's really, really, really slim. Again, compare this. There's no comparison. And this is not the fattest pen that I have, so <laughs> this is really, really slim. So, if you like that, this is great for traveling. It takes Parker cartridges, they are easily available and they take a lot of ink inside. If you prefer, you can use it with a converter. So, what else would you like to have? So, this is all that I had to show you about these uncommon pen. You can find it easily, but it's not that common. You won't see one of these every day. I hope you liked the video. I hope you find these kind of reviews interesting. I hope you are okay, that you'll stay safe during this crisis of the coronavirus and please follow the instructions of your country's health authorities because they will know the best for you. So, this is all for today. I have to thank you so much for watching and I will see you next video. Bye.